And welcome back to Let's Play SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Last time, our setup for this game is that SpongeBob and Patrick made a wish for robots to play with, since it was just not the same playing with toys all this time. And just coincidentally, pa uh, Plankton was hatching a plot to take over Bikini Bottom with an army of robots, which predictably backfired on him. Man, who would have guessed that SpongeBob SquarePants was a part of the real robot genre? Boom! But that's neither here nor there. We, uh, spent some time going through Spongebob's house, getting our first golden spatula, going out of his house, getting another couple golden spatulas, plus various other collectibles, and now we are ready for the first real level of the game, Jellyfish Fields. You do not need any golden spatulas to access this level, it is the Spiral Mountain or Babam's Battlefield of this game. The rolling green hills of Jellyfish Fields, a place to experience nature at its most raw and sometimes a bit tender from the stings. Squidward, are you okay? No, I'm not okay, you barnacle head. Do I look like I'm okay? Well, your nose does look pretty big. I mean, bigger than usual because it's usually pretty big. And you look clammy and oh my gosh, you're bald! I've always been bald, but now I'm stung all over. Well, according to the Jellyfisher Field Manual, severe jellyfish stings can be treated effectively by applying a thick layer of King Jellyfish Jelly to the affected areas. <laughs> King j j Jellyfish! Well, I guess you're off to scale Spork Mountain and die a horrible death under the vicious tentacles of King Jellyfish. <laughs> I'll stay here, balled up here in excruciating pain. You do that! Don't worry, Squidward! I'll bring back that King Jellyfish jelly for you to rub all over yourself. And predictably, things are not going very well for Squidward. And, uh, SpongeBob makes a bit of a weird entendre there, but that is our setup for Jellyfish Fields. We need to get the King Jellyfish Jelly in order to, uh, help Squidward out here. Got a sign over here. This is goo. SpongeBob and Patrick can't swim, so goo don't let them fall in the goo. Game. Spoilers. Don't let us know that we can play as Patrick before we even see him. Oh, okay, we technically did see him, but there's nothing to indicate that he was playable. This is a teleport box. When you have both of the teleport boxes in the area open, you may teleport between them by jumping inside. This actually is half true. You can teleport by using these boxes, but you only have to open the uh, connecting box at the end of the level in order to jump between them. You do not actually need to tag the uh, first box you come across, which is a nice little convenience thing for uh, if you happen to miss it. And sometimes they are not exactly in the way. Also, I already took a hit there. Those uh, little robots, they actually uh, can be a little bit weird to hit them. Uh, SpongeBob's uh, bubble spin does not reach out as far as it looks. Now, you definitely want to go around and break as many tiki's and such as possible. Now, it wasn't strictly necessary for me to use those tiki's right there as platforms, but I do want to establish this point early on. Sometimes you will need to use tiki's as platforms in order to uh, progress or collect a secret, and breaking them prematurely, of course, can rob you of the ability to do any jumping. Like this right here, if we break a couple of these tiki's, we can jump up and get this health if we need it. I think I broke too many, but you get my points. Going over here, get a whole bunch of tiki's for us to break. Always try to break these as quickly as possible so you can rack up those combos. Uh, the higher your combo gets, the more shiny objects you get once it concludes. And like I said, we want many, many shiny objects, as many as we can. And even with the maximum number of shiny objects we can get, uh, I will still need to do some farming. Do you want to feed the clam 125 shiny objects to complete the bridge? This is the primary purpose of shiny objects within the levels. You will come across these clams that function as cash gates. You have to pay them off in order to uh, unlock a critical part of the level, though sometimes you can engage in some sequence breaks that allow you to ignore that. This is a checkpoint. If you are defeated after activating a checkpoint, you will restart at the checkpoint. 
instead of at the beginning of the area. Very convenient. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom does not have a live system. It's a bit of ahead of the curve compared to other platforms at the time, which were still using uh, standard live systems, and if you died, you got ejected from the level. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom goes for something that's uh, noticeably more modern, uh, kind of uh, interesting for a budget title. And uh, it really is nice how uh, this game goes the extra mile to try and make things convenient for the player, even if this was just trying to be accommodating for a young audience. This is Freezy Fruit. Only Patrick can use the Freezy Fruit. Now, Freezy Fruit, if we're playing as Patrick, he can toss it into the goo to freeze it and walk along it. And that's the intended way to get that sock over there. However, we have an alternative option for getting that sock, so let's see here. Let's wait for this tiki to drop down a little bit. Then, if we can get on top of these tikis, we can jump onto this tree here, get those shiny objects, and then let's just bounce again, jump on over, use a bubble spin to extend us out, we can grab the sock that way. Honestly, it's just more convenient to grab the sock le like that right now. Even if it isn't strictly the intended way, we can do it, so why not? Uh, I will let you know, this level does actually have a couple of socks that require abilities we do not yet have in order to access them. Fortunately, this game does not have too much of that style of design when it comes to making a collectathon platformer. Only this level and the one immediately following it have any collectibles that require you to get future abilities in order to collect them, and you just can't get them on your first try. Uh, the rest of the levels in the game, they can all be completed in one shot. Make that jump right there, and we can bubble bounce on this button. Get used to Spongebob saying that, and create a bunch a of barrel platforms over here, once again giving us access to another sock. We're just collecting these like crazy. Jellyfish Fields has by far the most socks in the game, perhaps just to give you a reasonable uh, tutorial on the various ways you can expect to collect them, such as unlocking platforming challenges, or coming back and using character-specific abilities. So, we've got 14 to collect altogether. We can only collect 12 of them on our first go of Jellyfish Field here. Uh, this cannon shooting these, uh, looks like pufferfish is shooting at us. Be mindful when trying to get around these. The hitbox on those pufferfish is a lot bigger than it looks, and the game's really wonky <laughs> physics for getting hit can send you flying quite a distance. Hey, it's Gary. Hey, Gary, what's shaking? Wow. Wow, a bungee jump for a golden spatula! I must be in... heaven! Come on, Spongebob, beware the hooks, lad. But no, in this game, this is a bungee hook. Spongebob can bungee from it. To bungee from the bungee hook, just jump up and touch it. To dive downward, press the A button. To exit the bungee hook, press the B button. So, we can jump into these hooks here, and bungee on down, and get this golden spatula right at the start. Got all the shiny objects there, so we can just let go immediately. You don't have to do too much when you get onto a bungee hook, typically. Usually, you can just dive straight down and collect the thing you're supposed to, then pop off. Though, there is one mission that revolves around bungee hooking. Uh, Gary, what do you guys say? Oh, you said it, Gary. I'm sure he said something very eloquent and very deep. He has such a way with words. Hitting this button here opens up some platforms for us. Bit disappointed that Spongebob didn't say his catchphrase for pushing buttons in this game here. You hear that one a lot, trust me. Get out of my way, robot. Yeah, so, like I said, uh, sometimes the uh, range on the bubble spin isn't quite uh, as much as you'd hope. We've got a brand new enemy. This is the Hammer. Uh, get it, get it, get it. Anyways, this guy, he just uh, winds back and slams straight down. He does have a bit of an area of effect on that swing, so be mindful when you're at all close to him. Uh, there are random NPCs wandering around uh, Bikini Bottom and the various levels, but you can't really interact with them, besides from beating them up, if you decide to be a little bit cruel. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Nice bit of uh, tiki's here to break for a super ultra mega combo. One thing to note is that when robots get flying, you can send them flying into other robots to destroy them at the same time. Additionally, robots are worth, uh, I think it's triple the combo points that tiki's are, so you can get uh, some pretty big combos going by either knocking robots into each other or by knocking them into tiki's. As you saw, I managed to launch that robot into a tiki and immediately got a super combo rather than a normal combo. 
So here is the first uh, sock that we require a new ab or a, an ability we do not have yet in order to get. SpongeBob needs to know the Bubble Bowl move in order to play this game. Should we have the Bubble Bowl? Well, we can engage in a little bit of bubble bowling, but unfortunately that is not an option at the moment. It will be a little bit before we get the Bubble Bowl. Now, <laughs> SpongeBob gets it too. Uh, we can, uh, when we do get the Bubble Bowl, I'm not going to come back for, uh, that immediately, because there's another sock later in the level that requires another specific ability to get, so it'd just be a waste of time to go for, uh, it, uh, when we have the Bubble Bowl, uh, when we could just come back and get, uh, those two socks at the same time. For some reason, there is a second sign letting you know about Goo, I guess just in case you didn't see the first one. You will definitely see that one, because you can't walk by this area without triggering the dialogue for that sign. There we go. Exactly what I was talking about with knocking robots into each other. Because they're worth triple combo points, we immediately get an ultra combo. Alright, so we've got a little bit of bouncing platforming we can do, but not really, because if we go backward from there... Okay, hold on. I was uh, a little too uh, late on going backwards there. We go backwards here, we actually hit a little secret area where we can jump along these tiki's and get a sock. Don't be so judgmental, Spongebob. But with that grab, now we actually want to bounce along these various trees here. So, just make our way here. Always want to get those blue shiny objects at the top of the bounce. Gives us a good amount of shiny objects to work, th work with. Remember, those are ten. Top the jellyfish rock, get another sock, and fortunately, another tree to bounce us all the way backwards. That's all we need to do. Now we've got this platform here that will tilt depending on what side we're standing on. You can jump along it to minimize the amount of tilting it does. That machine huffing and puffing over there is a duplicatatron 1000. The D1000 will continue to create robots until it is destroyed. Be careful though, it goes out with a big bang. So duplicatatron, duplicatatrons, sorry, it's a bit of a tough word to say really fast. Uh, they just infinitely spawn out robots for as long as they're active. Usually uh, they'll spawn them out as soon as you destroy all the robots in an area. Now if you want to, you can let it just spit out the robots infinitely and farm them for shiny objects. But I don't consider that to be very efficient or very fun, so we're just going to smash it. Like the game said, they go out with a bang, so if you're standing near them when they explode, you will get hurt. Let's push this button right here and get another golden spatula. We're making good progress here. Every level has eight golden spatulas and a variable amount of socks. Not every level is going to have 14 socks. Obviously, since uh, there are nine main levels in the game and uh, only 80 socks. Wow! Mermaid Man! I have all your comics and toys and mail! Eh, huh? W what Oh, yeah, it's that sponge kid! And now, what was I supposed to tell you? That Patrick is surrounded by robots and needs my help! Huh? Oh, no. I think it had something to do with massaging my feet. Well, if massaging your feet will save Patrick, then massage I must! Help! They're making me hit myself! Massaging your feet isn't working. I think I'd better try a more direct approach. By clipping my toenails? Here I come, Patrick! Yeah, you probably noticed right away that that is definitely not Ernest Borgnine. The impersonator they're using for this game, and I use impersonator as a very loose term, is the same guy who is also doubling for Mr. Krabs in this game, uh, Joe White. Uh, his uh, his uh, Mermaid Man voice is uh, even less spot on than his Mr. Krabs voice, and his Mr. Krabs voice was uh, not that great to begin with. This is a sign that, for once, doesn't automatically activate when we walk near it. This is a slide. When Spongebob, Patrick, or Sandy, hey, spoilers game, jump onto a slide, they will zip down the slope at hydrodynamic speeds. And, of course, Spongebob, if you've seen the episode Pre-Hibernation pre Week, you would not be surprised to see that he slides along using his tongue. Now, I'm going to be going a bit slow here because you can jump up here, and you can probably guess this will lead us to a sock if we follow it all the way through. Uh, one thing to note is that you can't actually go faster when sliding. Holding forward on the analog stick accomplishes nothing. Also, another sock to grab right there. But you can slow down by holding back, and that's very important to know for the more difficult sliding levels in the game. Now, with that sock grab, we can move on down here. Uh, 
This swanky little electric tune indicates we are in a combat challenge. There are various combat challenges in the game, and usually they revolve around destroying duplicatatrons and then hitting switches. Very rarely does it just revolve around destroying all enemies. That is the first one taken care of. This one's not too complicated. This central area will just constantly be getting hammers and the small robots whose name I forget. I should have checked the, uh... <laughs> this game actually has an enemy compendium, so to speak, where you can see the names of the various robots. I remember a lot of them offhand, but I don't remember the name of the little robots, which is a bit of a shame. And a failure on my part, because you fight so many of them. Anyways, challenge is almost over. We've already gotten two switches hit. Just one more to take care of. Nice that I managed to knock the robots into each other there. There, getting us a cool ultra combo. Hammers give considerably more shiny objects than small robots. The small ones are giving us, like, what, five? The hammers give us about 20 altogether, so uh, if you really want to, it isn't terrible shiny objects to just kill them repeatedly. Let the duplicatatrons do the, their thing and just keep killing these hammers. Get even more if you keep knocking them into each other. But we're not going to waste time on that. I'm going to have to farm, but I'm not interested in doing that in really repetitive ways on camera. Anyways, let's see if Patrick is doing okay here. Hey, SpongeBob! Woo! Thank goodness you're safe, Patrick. Well, of course, SpongeBob. Why wouldn't I be? Well, the robots and the... Oh, yeah, I found this for you. I don't know what it is, but it looks important. Thanks, Patrick. I tell you what, all that running around has left me pooped. Why don't you continue on for a bit? Okay. And we are officially uh, playing as Patrick. Going to immediately pick up this golden spatula that he just put on the ground. Don't litter, Patrick. Now, Patrick uh, has uh, quite a few control differences from SpongeBob. For one thing to note is that he can't attack while jumping. And he's got this belly bump that, instead of hitting all around him, only hits in front of him. He also doesn't have a bubble bounce, but he does have a belly flop. He does not have a Bubble Bash style move, though, that allows him to hit directly above him. Instead, Patrick's abilities revolve around... This is a Throw Fruit. Patrick can pick up Throw Fruit and throw it. Throw Fruit will push buttons and destroy Tiki's or damage robots, but use it quickly because Throw Fruit's wilts after a few seconds. Yes, the Throw Fruit... Oh my god, that's gonna play uh, hell on my uh, voice. Uh, they wilt very, very quickly. They only last about 15 seconds, and a lot of uh, puzzles revolve around this short time frame. Patrick can also pick up and throw Tiki's, but only Tiki's that don't have other Tiki's stacked on top of them. So, yes, we can pick up this Tiki here. See that flying Tiki? Just, uh... Do a little bit of a fastball there to take it out. Over there, what's that? This is a bus stop. You may switch between playing SpongeBob or playing Patrick at bus stops. Alright, but we're not going to do that because we do need Patrick to get further in the level. Patrick can th throw fruit up steps, then climb the steps, pick up the fruit, and throw it again. But you'd better hurry before it wilts. And like I said, the game has a lot of uh, kind of like timing puzzles revolving around getting fruits from point A to point B before they expire and burst. This is a special Patrick teeter-totter that only Patrick can use. Have Patrick pick up a throw fruit, stand on the pink starfish side, and then throw the fruit at the target side. Patrick will then be flung across the other side of the lake. Okay, works for me. We'll, very, we'll uh, occasionally come across these Patrick teeter-totters, and they basically just serve as alternative bridges to other sections of the level. This is a Thunder Tiki. When Patrick touches it, it will begin the storm, and after a few seconds, we'll go boom. Don't be near it when it goes boom. Thunder Tikis are a Tiki we'll be seeing a lot of throughout the rest of the game. Like the game says, they're on a bit of a delayed fuse there. Patrick can pick up a Thunder Tiki and throw it, just like other Tikis, but he'd better throw it fast. And this is uh, important for setting up a lot of big combos of destroying Tikis. If you jump onto that tree right there, it'll throw you back up to the Teeter Totter, which is the way we came, so we don't need to do that. Uh, hey, you barnacle head! Watch where you're going! The rock is talking to me. Almighty rock, I am at your command! Down here, you big pink lummox! Oh, hi there, Mr. Plankton. Are you going to vaporize me today? So very tempting. Unfortunately, I found myself in the undesirable position of having to assist you. I was in an undesirable position yesterday, and now my neck hurts. Heed my words, my large future minion. Go into Jellyfish Cave. 
Follow the instructions on the signs that you see. At the end of the caves, you'll still be a big pink idiot, but you'll know enough to help defeat the robots and get me back into the chum bucket. Well, then will you vaporize me? I might spare your life so I can force you to work in my sweatshop making low-quality design and knockoff wallets. Oh, thank you! Man, Plankton is on fire in this game. That was actually really funny. Anyway, if you jump up in the air and press the B button, Patrick will slam down to the ground, damaging Tiki's or pressing buttons below him. We'll have uh, the game go over this later, but uh, Patrick's Belly Flop also has a secondary ability. If he does not land directly on an enemy, but close by them, the shockwave from the Belly Flop will result in the enemies being stunned. You can also pick up stunned enemies, although this only works on larger robots like hammers. Uh, small robots will just be destroyed by the shockwaves. Alright, uh, remember, Patrick can throw a throw through, then pick it up and throw it again before it wilts. Thank you, game. I was able to pick up on that earlier, but I appreciate the uh, reaffirmation. One thing to note about the throw fruits is that uh, the hitboxes can be a little wonky on them. You do kind of need to be standing the right distance from buttons in order to make sure they actually arc properly and hit them. Uh, this uh, throw fruit does not actually need to be carried, but if you can get it onto that center platform, you can pick it up here and then throw it into those tiki's over there. Get a little combo going there. Not anything too special though. Alright, these spikes in the ground a little bit- oh, oh god, oh god, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Yeah, that's, uh, sometimes, uh, the physics- Oh, no! <laughs> Will we be seeing our first death here? It doesn't help that I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, jeez. Okay, let's see. Wait for this one to go down. There we go. Pair of underwear. There we go. Everybody wears, uh, SpongeBob's underwear. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. If I can get it with the throw-through, that'd be nice. Yes! You have to be- oh, never mind. You have to be standing at a very particular distance to hit that Thunder Tiki. Uh, you cannot change the lock-on of, uh... Patrick's uh, throwing arm. Uh, you can only move into specific spaces to get him to try and throw at specific objects. The weight of the throw through will also activate pressure plates. So yeah, we can throw a throw through onto the pressure plate and get that gate open. We do have to be quick though because it'll eventually pop and then the gate will go back up. If you hear that sound, uh, that little uh, fanfare when going over a blockade or such. Oh, never mind. Usually that means it'll just stay down so you don't have to worry about it. One thing to note is that throw throughs immediately get destroyed if you get interrupted by a dialog box. Patrick can also jump on throw fruit to get higher to higher places. He may stack throw fruit as well by throwing a throw fruit on top of another throw fruit. Oh my god, please stop. This will allow Patrick to get to even higher places. In the immortal words of Donkey Kong, how high can you get? And for Patrick, that is, uh, well, as high as he can stack throw fruits and then jump on them. One thing to note is that there is a very, very easy to miss sock coming up here. Just gotta angle the camera behind you, and there it is. I didn't bring attention to this, but we did get enough socks earlier to turn them in for a golden spatula, which we will be doing once we get out of this area, but we still got quite a ways to go. Heading here, Patrick is beginning to slide now. As you can see, he doesn't have the tongue strength to slide like SpongeBob does, so he opts to just slide on his back. I have to imagine he has quite the rash going at the end of this. One thing to watch out for is Thunder Tiki's along the slide path. Bouncing into them uh, will just immediately detonate them, damaging you. This is a Freezy Fruit. We already saw this earlier, but now the game formally explains to us how this is supposed to work. Patrick can pick up Freezy Fruit and throw it. Freezy Fruit will temporarily freeze goo. Patrick can slide on the frozen goo until after it thaws. This is how we were supposed to get the sock earlier, but we could have just gotten it by bouncing into the water, which is ultimately what I decided to do. I'm sorry, it's not water, it's goo. Yeah, that's uh, one of those things about Spongebob where uh, you have to not think too hard about it, and they're more than willing to make a, a couple uh, meta-contextual jokes about it. If Patrick belly flops near robots, he can damage or stun them. Small robots will simply be defeated by Patrick's belly flop. Larger robots will be stunned for a short period of time. So let's see, we got uh, just three small robots here. Let's belly flop and take them all out at once, getting a cool super mega combo. Patrick may also use Frozen Root to defeat robots. 
Probably could have guessed that, but, you know, it's nice to get that confirmation. Of course, if Patrick misses entirely, it really does not help him out here. Here is stunning a robot, and then let's throw it into the Duplicatatron. Give it, uh, you know, get it to return to its maker. Patrick may even pick up robots he has stunned and throw them into other robots. Thank you, game. So, what we gotta do to solve this little puzzle here, not much of a puzzle, but, you know, what qualifies in this game, stun one of these robots, pick them up, and throw them into that switch there. We want to hit this Duplicatatron and then jump up and grab the Golden Spatula to exploit invincibility frames, my favorite thing in video games, and I'm sure yours too. Alright, with that taken care of, we can give this guy a quick bump and make our way out of here. As you can see, at this barricade, we can leave the cave and go to Jellyfish Lake. Ahoy there! Squidward tells me you're looking for the King Jellyfish. Yes. Good thing, too. That monster has been stinging all my good customers in their poop decks. I hear that you can find him up top of Old Sport Mountain here. Go hook that beast, sailor! Oh boy, Mr. Krabs. I'll see what I can do. When it comes to completing this level, I'd say I'm already halfway there. enemy, a tartar sauce wielding robot that shoots out three globs that persist on the ground a little bit. This is one of the first enemies that, if you only attack it with your normal attack, takes two hits to defeat. But as you can see, Patrick can stun it and then destroy it with a single belly bump. Hey, stop doing that. Let's uh, destroy some of these thunder tikis here, get as many combos as we can going. Eh, it's not worth it to go that way. We're at full health. We do not need to go out of our way to get those pairs of underwear. I haven't drawn too much attention to it, but jellyfish are around, and they do function as enemies. They will attack you if you harass them too much, but uh, they are generally not too aggressive, and you mostly just walk past them. They don't drop any shiny objects or anything. Here is a little shooting gallery, so to speak, that you can do with Patrick. I messed that up. You don't get anything special for destroying all those tikis, though. I'm not really sure why they put that there. I guess just for the heck of it. Hello, Mrs. Puff. Hello, Patrick. I've got a job for you to do. Oh, boy. I found a golden spatula, but those robots out on the island stole it and threw it into the lake. If you can figure out how to get it back, you're welcome to it. Show sure enough, Mrs. Puff. <laughs> Show enough, Mrs. Puff. All right, let's do this. This is uh, a mission that revolves entirely around Patrick's ability to stun and throw enemies. As you can see, I screwed it up a little bit there. If you look closely at these stars and uh, the like rotating stars the enemies have around their head, you can also see a wrench and plankton mixed in there. Nice little detail like that. Uh, this is actually the last time the game makes use of Patrick's ability to stun and throw enemies. There are no other missions in the game based around this ability, funnily enough. They were they were not particularly inspired with this one. Or perhaps they had a fleeting inspiration for it. As you can see, you gotta be a little bit careful when picking up and throwing the enemies, as Patrick is pretty vulnerable when doing so. Pretty easy to end up taking some damage while doing that. Fortunately, the game is still pretty merciful at this point and puts a lot of underwear around the arena so that you can fully restore your health, even if it doesn't fit Patrick quite right. Alright, as Mrs. Puff said, the spatula was thrown into the lake. Now that we've drained it ever so slightly, we can reach it. When I was doing my uh, previous practice run for this game, uh, I actually completely forgot that I had grabbed the spatula and went back to Mrs. Puff expecting a reward, and then just kind of stood there awkwardly for five seconds until I remembered I grabbed it. Well done, Patrick. You're a real star. <laughs> Can I get a cookie? No. Ooh, shut down. Anyways, that's the end of Patrick's stint in this level. We don't need him for anything else, so we can switch to SpongeBob, who will be needed in the near future. Tell me you haven't been driving. Of course not, Mrs. Puff. I don't even have a license. Oh, good. Then it was just another bad dream. The amount of PTSD that Mrs. Puff suffers from, I can only imagine. This is a shh, Tiki. 
SpongeBob will have to sneak up on it in order to destroy it. Patrick may throw things at it from a range. But yes, this is a Shutiki. A unique ability that SpongeBob has is that if you press lightly on the analog snick, he will creep up and these Shutikis will not be able to hear him coming. Should you walk right up to them, instead they will go back into the ground. You have to back up a little bit to get them to pop back up. They have pretty decent shiny objects if you manage to destroy them. Let's see if we can't hit this guy. Nah. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is actually intentionally take some damage here because we can just smash these uh, Thunder Tiki's, make a little chain of explosions, take out all those robots and the Duplicatron, and get a pretty sizable combo in the process. Process, And there's a pair of underwear right here, so nothing to worry about. That path to the right just leads to some underwear, so we're not going to have to worry about that. SpongeBob has to hit these tartar, so tartar sauce robots twice in order to take them out. Get all these guys taken out. Deftly avoid the hammer here. One thing to note about projectile using enemies in this game is that their aim is super, super random. Sometimes they'll be crack shots and shoot right where you are. Other times they'll shoot in wild patterns that just so happen to be where you're landing, and then sometimes they'll miss you by a country mile. This game keeps you on your toes like that. SpongeBob should come back here later when he knows the cruise bubble move. This is the sole other sock in this level that requires an ability that we do not have yet in order to get. And this ability is not available until the last area of the game, so it'll be quite a while before we can actually grab that one. Whenever you see Thunder Tiki's, you should always uh, just brush by them to get them to start blowing up, and ideally they will destroy all the Tiki's that they are surrounded by, giving you a decent amount of shiny objects and a decent combo in the process. As you can see, that guy almost uh, coated the landing there, which would have forced me in some, into some damage. This is a stone tiki. It cannot be destroyed with ordinary moves. It can be blown up by thunder tikis. So yes, stone tikis give a lot of shiny objects, but normal moves cannot destroy them. Thunder tikis, however, are fair game. So if we let the thunder tikis blow up on these things, we can get some pretty sizable shiny objects rewards, as well as a decent combo going. Let's get this one blowing up here. Get this hammer out of the way. D oh, nice. And there we get Spongebob's combo quote. We just met the Spongeinator. This way, uh, coming here is optional. Oof, yeah, these platforms sink. I almost uh, got taken out there. But we can set off a detonation. Oh, whoa, that was close. Just barely was able to refresh my jump because I uh, just brushed that platform. With that taken care of, we've got another cash gate, the last one for this level. We need 2,000 shiny objects to feed this clam, so this is why you need to be making sure you're getting good combos and going for every shiny object that you can. We're closing in on the end of the level. We're pretty much in the last stretch here. We've got a few more socks to collect. Let's see what our total is right now. We've got nine at the moment. There are three more that we can collect. Both of them are uh, relatively shortly along the way. As you can see, you can spot one of them in the distance right there. That is one nice thing about the Xbox version of this game. It has a much more sizable draw distance than the GameCube and PS2 versions. And in general, it just has uh, the best sound mixing and is uh, the least buggy of the various versions of the game. This is still a budget title at the end of the day, so uh, expect a little bit of scuff if you decide to play this for yourself. But it's great fun, it's great fun, I love it. Anyways, taking these platforms here, definitely want to extend your jumps with the uh, bubble spin just to make sure you make it. But this will take us to the last, or ne next to last sock in this specific area. Heading over this way, you want to be careful going around these slopes. Sometimes you can slip off and kind of annoying to have to walk back all this way. Fortunately, we have this box here, so if I do fall, we can just jump into a box to get back up here. Get out of here, tartar sauce. Now, the path to get the sock is this one right off to here. That freezy fruit, if you throw it into the water below, you can get that purple shiny object that was under the bridge we saw. Alright, last sock in this area. There is one more sock in the level altogether, but it's not until the next area we reach and after the boss fight for this area. Not every level in Battle for Bikini Bottom has a boss awaiting you at the end, but this one does. Alright, so, got another slope platform that begins to tilt depending on where you're standing. We just want to jump up along this and we can make it to the other side, no problem. 
Now you've got these slope platforms here that you can jump across, but there's another path that you can also take here. There's just some shiny objects up top there, and it's considerably less than the shiny objects we can get by going towards this set of uh, tiki's right here. Let's brush by this uh, thunder tiki, let this blow up here. Get a huge amount of shiny objects, very nice. Too bad we didn't trigger the Spongenator quote. If you were playing as Patrick up to this point, you have no choice but to switch to Spongebob now. Spongebob can jump up walls when this symbol appears. Jump against the sidewall and press a, the A button to jump again. So yes, yeah, Spongebob has a wall jumping ability that is very sparingly used in this game. This is the only time it appears in this level. Oop, ah. Yeah, I got a little careless there. Jumping into goo launches you back to the last solid ground you were standing on, if the game can manage it. And sometimes the uh, physics on this can be a bit weird. As you can see, Spongebob can wall jump pretty rapidly. Make sure that you are actually angling the uh, analog stick in the uh, direction you want to go to. Uh, because if you're not going fast enough, uh, well, it will matter for a challenge later in the game. Let's get this golden spatula here. And we are finished with this area. There is just one more area left to do in this level, and then we will be done with it. It's time to take on the King Jellyfish at the top of Spork Mountain. Bubble Buddy! Gosh, everyone is trying to help out today! Step quietly there. That King Jellyfish is just up at the top of this path. Good luck! You'll need it. Thanks, Bubble Buddy. I appreciate the moral support, Bubble Buddy. If you are low on health at this point, there is a trail of underwear for you to restore yourself. I knew the King Jellyfish was big, but who knew he had such a beautiful voice? I don't think I've ever heard a video game character acapella to their own music. I mean, I guess there's like the, or, you know, the game's music. Uh, I guess there's like the, you know, the bop boss from the new Super Mario Bros. games. But anyway, King Jellyfish, very, very simple boss fight, as you expect from the first boss of the game. He will occasionally charge up, drop to the ground, and send off a shockwave. You just have to jump over the wave and hit him. When you hit him, he will send out some jellyfish. These jellyfish are just the standard pinks that we've been seeing up to this point. Oh, I'm surprised I got hit there. If you ever get hit in a boss fight, uh, the boss will do a little bit of uh, jeering towards you. Funnily enough, uh... Funnily enough, because I got interrupted, or I interrupted the King Jellyfish there, I actually uh, caused him to skip a certain part of his pattern where he'd release special blue jellyfish that are much more aggressive than the pinks and actually much more likely to attack you. Now that the King Jellyfish has left, his shower is drained, you can collect these shiny objects here. Also, the bloom on this uh, is quite uh, impressive. I got the brightness on my TV a little too high. A little blinding for me. Anyway, with that taken care of, we have a slide to go down. So, there is another sock on this slide, and it is the final slide, uh, sl sock that we can collect for this level. Uh, it's very easy to miss, but coming up at this turn right here, you can instead jump down here and find an alternative path through the slide. Alright, and just go over this. There is the sock, and we reconvene on the proper path. There we go. Uh, it is very difficult to hit shitikis while you're on a slide. It is possible. But uh, the timing for it is a bit weird. If we time a jump off the slide properly, we get a golden spatula. And hey, it's Larry the Lobster. See, no problem. You could do anything you set your mind and your muscle to. That's absolutely the right, Larry. You set your mind and your muscle to it, you can be living like Larry. Anyways, we've got an exit trampoline here. This will take us back to the start of the level and correspondingly take us back to Squidward. I never noticed that there's a dumpster in the background there. That's a, that's a, oh, is that a dumpster? I, it's like, it's like a PNG, so I have a hard time telling. Anyway. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, that feels so much better. Anything for my best friend Squidward. Can I rub some on? Um, what if I just gave you this? Well, SpongeBob isn't able to rub some on, but he is able to rub a golden spatula out of Squidward. Pause. Anyway, that is the last golden spatula for this level. All golden spatulas are obtainable, it's just two socks that we are not able to get when we first come here. So, we will leave that be for the time being, and take a taxi back to Bikini Bottom. With all those spatulas collected, we are able to access every roadblock, uh, or, uh, gate in, uh, or taxi stand, sorry, in Bikini Bottom, except for the one leading, well, deeper into Central Bikini Bottom. We need 15 for that one, but we can go to Goo Lagoon, and we can go to Downtown, if we so desire. But... We have completed a level for this video, so that I, I think that is a good place to end it. There is one more thing we can do, though. We've got a certain something for Patrick. Wow, SpongeBob, you found some! Now they're back home, safe where they belong. Here's your golden back scratcher. Spatula. I don't speak Italian. I have that little exchange burned into my memory for some, re <laughs> some reason. Here's your golden back scratcher. Spatula. I don't speak Italian. Ah, classic, classic. But that's where we're going to be leaving this video. Uh, if we had some more shiny objects, we could buy a golden spatula from Mr. Krabs, but we are 300 short on that. So, yeah, even playing that level, and I think I played that level pretty well, doing a lot of combos, getting a lot of shiny objects. Still don't have enough for a spatula from Mr. Krabs after paying off all the cash gates, and this is part of why you need to do some farming in order to get the shiny objects to buy those spatulas. Fortunately, within the next level, we'll get a very, very good shiny any object farming uh, area, so that'll be something to look forward to. But for now, this is where we're going to end this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, though, goodbye.